Hey everybody, this is Nate Smoyer, and you're listening to the Tech Nest Podcast. This is the show where we sit down with the leaders in real estate and technology to find out what they're doing to transform the way we buy, sell, and invest in real estate. If you've got an interest in real estate and technology, stick around. You're in the right place. Well, hey, Jindo. Welcome to the show. Hey, how are you? I'm doing good. Yourself? I am good today. I've, uh, it's a sunny day in, in California, so it's, it's nice. And, Isn't um, it always sunny in California? We're in San Francisco, so it's always uh, oh, okay. a little bit colder than, than what's around us. But so you have good. to deal with a, an occasional cloud. Uh, I, think there's, I think that's how Salesforce came up with it, in the cloud, right? I think there's this, there's this permanent cloud across San Francisco. Oh, really? I don't know. That's, that's I guess. <laughs> maybe. That could, oh, that, that's such a, someone should lay claim to that. If they haven't laid claim to that, that would be a good story. But you're, you're talking to someone from the Northwest up here. So uh, any place that gets as sunny is always much sunnier than, than where it is where I'm at. Well, uh, appreciate you taking aside the time and uh, joining us today. And um, we'll get this started right. Uh, why don't you go ahead, introduce yourself, let everyone know who you are and what you do. Cool. Um, so I'm Jindo Lee, the uh, CEO and founder of a company called HappyCo. Um, and HappyCo, we actually build software for the uh, residential property management industry, specifically for uh, the multifamily industry. Okay. Now, before we get into any details about what you guys actually do, yeah. help and all the, the, the details there, we've got to start with how do you determine to name your company Happy Co working in real estate? And let's even talk about property management and like loop in property management stack because in the property management industry, happy is not a word often talked about or used in sentences. Maybe, you know, it's usually not happy is how the... How yeah. Goes. So where does this come from? Well, so I think um, when we first started the company and... Um, uh, I mean, do you want me to tell you a story how we got started? I think that could be an interesting. Yeah, call. okay. That, if, that, if that loops in, yeah, go for it. So, um, when we, so my, my background is I'm actually a graphic designer, right? So um, I built, I guess, game, video games. So I worked on games like Mortal Kombat, Gauntlet Legends, Blitz, The League, uh, NBA Ballers, all that kind of stuff. Wow. And so when I finished that up, I, I I started my own web agency, which I then sold um, yeah, a couple of years later on. I started investing in real estate. And this is kind of where I, I, how I started the company was I, I got these um, um, inspection reports from our property manage, my property managers. And at that stage, I had stuff in Australia and in the, in the US, uh, like investments in, in these countries. And so they would come to me and they're like, hey, this is the inspection report. And um, I was like, wow, that's really ugly. I, I can't read your handwriting. And one of them actually, the one in the US, one of my managers said, I'm going to fax you the photos <laughs> for the inspections. And I'm like, this is 2011. I don't have a fax machine. So anyway, we, we <laughs> so decided, this is really weird. This industry has a lot of terrible things. <laughs> so I, I did some research and I found there wasn't any software to do inspections. And then I um, uh, built some screenshots uh, on an iPad one and I rang 20 companies just cold called them and just said, hey, I've got this app and I want to show you what it is. And they said, sure. I'm like, wow, that's easy. So I went in and then 19 of the, the 20 people um, that were looking at the, the, the screenshots actually said, I want this software and I'm going to pay you money for it. And, and during that, those conversations, those 19 people, every time I showed them the, the screenshots, they were like, oh my God, it's going to make me so happy. It's going to make me so happy. The inspector is going to be happy. The landlord's going to be happy. And I'm like, that's a very interesting emotion to, to kind of use. And so, um, so we named the original company Happy Inspector. Um, that, that's how we, we came up with, with that name. That's fascinating. First off, let me talk about how uh, you, you just put a bunch of screenshots together and then cold called people and said, hey, I have this app. Yeah, I mean that is selling right there. That is true, true and true yeah. salesmanship. Uh, but your background is in design. Where did you learn to sell? Um, I think uh, I think like in in, in maybe uh, if I look in hindsight, like I think we we as human beings sell every single day, or we're selling something, right? Whether we're for someone or whatever it is, like we're all selling. Um, but for me, I think it's when. Um, when when I was when I started my own web agency, um, 
you know, you just, you just kind of learn to sell. And then when, when you, when you have, when you have bills to pay and you're back to get to the wall, <laughs> right. And you have to sell your skills. Um, yep. You just start selling, you start talking to people. And I love talking to people. So I didn't really think of it as selling. I thought of it as like, Hey, I've got this cool idea that I want to share with you. Do you want it? And, and um, uh, yeah, like nine, 19 people said yes. And, that was that. <laughs> Fascinating how easy uh, sales can be when you have a good product or service. <laughs> well, I, I think it, it really stems from from the problem, right? If you look at if you if, if there's a real problem and need, and mm. you can show ways on how you can solve the problems, then then it's then it's then it's easy. Because um, yeah. I'm sure you know of people that have great products, great uh, solutions, but there's no problem that they're trying to solve, and then those things don't sell because people are like, oh, right. that's not. But I don't need it. Uh, we just have a lot of freemium products these days. <laughs> yeah, try it because you may not need it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's get into the nitty gritty here. So, what is the big problem that Happy Co is out to solve? Yeah, so I think it comes back down to our our core beliefs, right? So, at, at Happy Co, what we believe um, is is we, we believe in building stronger, healthier, and happier communities. Um, you know, it sounds very airy fairy, but if we kind of broke it down a bit more, we believe like life is really short and we want to help people live their best lives. So that's kind of um, nothing to do with real estate per se, but the way we do that is we offer um, what I call very beautiful, easy to use, people centric software uh, and technology. And then we, we sort of provide that to multi, the multifamily real estate industry. And th- the products that we build help our customers be more efficient, more effective in their day-to-day operations. Um, it saves them time, you know, drive higher profits. And the cool part is if, if our customers can drive higher profits, then the owners and operators of real estate can reinvest those profits back into their communities and their properties. Um, and that ultimately that improves the lives of the people living there. So it's a very kind of chicken and egg problem, um, but that's what we believe in. And, and today we have an inspections platform to do um, any type of inspections on, on property. And we also have a due diligence module that um, customers use to do the acquisition walks, like the unit walks and these file audits. Yeah. So there's a, there's there's a, a lot of things property. going on in there. Yeah, it's a very long way, long-winded way to explain what we do. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, and maybe we, we, we didn't really cover, I mean, you know, so you, you went through this experience basically where you, you realized there's nothing out there doing what you guys wanted to do and, and scanning these things and getting a fax. And by the way, I'd like to point out, I shared this uh, on an interview the other day, and I'm just going to say it again because I'm very thankful for uh, people like yourself and many other guests because despite the fact that being 2019, I just went through an absolutely horrendous experience shopping for an apartment and signing contracts, which by the way, two real estate agents involved in the deal and not one of them using any sort of e-signature. So they left me to find a way to sign a PDF while traveling. (laughs) Yeah. You know, That's terrible. I'm like anyone else wouldn't have been able to get this deal done. So I'm thankful that um, you know people are out there trying to make people feel happy yeah. in in this space. Um, so fill me in. So let's talk through some of the features here. What what is probably the most commonly used feature or service that you guys provide uh, that is is used, and why is that so? Yeah. So I think um, if we talk about the inspections product that the platform that we have for to do inspections. Mm-hmm. So you think that it's really just an app to do, um, it's like a mobile app that you can use to collect information on, on a property. So that's being used by um, customers to do like a move in, move out inspection, for example. Yep. Yep. Uh, when, a, when a resident moves in and out of the property, today that process is paper driven, not really documented properly. Yep. We allow documentation to be digitized. So then there's no dispute when you move out, like, oh, did I punch a hole in the wall. I didn't do that. Like, yeah, I think you did. We've got before and after photos. So that's a very <laughs> common use case. Um, we have, um, with that, you can use it for risk compliance. So um, out in Oakland recently, there was a, a community where the railings kind of fell off and someone actually died, right? And, and wow. that's, actually, that's because of just, there wasn't a risk compliance safety check. Like, 
on the properties. And so customers use us to kind of do those safety checks as well. Um, so actually pe people's lives are at stake in some of these cases. So compliance, risk safety, move and move out, preventive maintenance. Um, uh, you know, if you do these large capital improvements on your properties, it's just the way for your, your, your company to have visibility in what you do. So that's what we, we sell. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. I had not heard the, the story in Oakland. Um, but I can give you a story here. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to make a, an admission years ago in my, in my youth. <laughs> I, and, and this is only to, to talk about like, this is why checklists are, are really important. Yeah. Um, they protect both tenants and landlords. Um, you know, so I've been in places where the landlord says, Hey, what, what did you do here? And I'm like, I, I didn't do that. And then they really tried to argue. I'm like, dude, I mean, I sent you the paperwork and signed this and you signed it acknowledging that this was existent when I took over the place. So I had, you know, I've rented some places that were sketchy like that and not great. There was also maybe a house that I rented where um, I signed the lease of like, apparently I was subletting, but the house was already being sublet. And I signed it from someone who was already subletting. So there was yeah. like, there was several layers into this. Yeah. And I ended up being the last person left in the house. Everyone had moved out and I emailed who I thought was a landlord, the owner, which was, she was just renting it for her son yeah. who no longer lived there. It was weird. But a hole got put into one of the, one of the walls. I, I, I don't know. But yeah. we just kind of hung a sign, like a traffic sign over it. <laughs> So when they came in, they were like, how'd this get here? And I may or may not have said that was there when we moved in. The sign yeah. was, the hole wasn't. But the point being is like these checklists, if you don't do them, right? I mean, it leaves you open for if you can't prove what was there or not there. And at the same time, um, for tenants, it protects them. But talk to me a bit about the standardization because... I think this is really important, I, you know, and I, and I see, but like a lot of, not every place is the same. So if I go print off a checklist from like Staples or Home Depot, it doesn't really cover everything. So how do you guys yeah, so keep a we, standard product, but make it fit to any different place? Yeah. So um, I think, you know, when I first met the 19 or so companies that bought from us from day one, I kind of like shadowed them for a while, each one of them. And I sort of said, what do you use to learn? They show me these forms. And on the forms, you can imagine there's, you know, kitchen area. There's all the different um, items within the kitchen, uh, like a countertop, all that kind of stuff. And then, then it got into bedroom one. And there's a, you know, there's the, the walls, the ceiling, the condition of the, uh, of the flooring. And then there was bedroom two, bedroom three, bedroom four. And then so I asked them, I said, well, what happens when you only have two bedrooms? Like, oh, we just cross out the other two bedrooms. Oh, okay. I go, what happens if there's five bedrooms? He goes, well, we pretty much have to grab and, you know, copy that <laughs> piece of paper and make another one. Um, and so what we quickly learned was it didn't matter if you had one or 20 bedrooms. In software technology, we allow our customers to, um, so for what we do today, we actually pull it from the rent roll. So if on the rent roll, it says this is a four by two. Oh, okay. Um, we can infer that there's four bedrooms and three bathrooms. So our software actually builds out the layout uh, on the fly. Um, and, and the cool part is if you're at the property, and this has happened, um, may or may not have happened, but let's say you go into a property and you're, you're like, hey, there's a dungeon. <laughs> there's a dungeon in this. I used this, to live uh, in one of those. We called it the uh, basement house. <laughs> Did it have chains? I don't know. <laughs> no, there was no chains, but it, oh, you mean one of those dungeons? Oh, those dungeons, yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, I never lived in one of those. <laughs> so, so we we had um, so let's say there's a dungeon, and we've actually had someone that, that requested it and said, "Hey, there's a dungeon here. What do I do?" On the fly, you can add a room and change the name of the room and call it dungeon. I mean, probably there's people in the basement too, but. Um, you can actually do that. And so you, you're, our customers can actually um, do that on the fly or they can um, use it based on the rent roll. That's how you can customize it. That's and, the first time so, anyone has ever talked about dungeons dungeon. on, on this show. <laughs> dungeons and dragons. No, this is just that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got it. Okay, so you can, you can add things on the fly. Does it allow you to take photos and store photos while you're doing the inspection? 
Yeah, absolutely. So it, it, with each of the, let's say you're in a kitchen and it has countertops, yep. for every item you can actually create, uh, you can take photos, you can have a rating, so you can say it's, it needs repair, it needs replacing, there's scuff marks, whatever it is. And you take a photo um, and uh, you can then make some notes about it as well. So you can yeah. say... You know, this needs a, a new laminate or whatever it is. See, I always felt like I was doing a good job with, you know, move in, move out inspections. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I'll take my camera phone, you know, and I just like taking photo and video. And you know what yeah. happens in a year later? I can't find any of that. Yeah, that, that's, that's the problem. I think like the, the, the technology is already there to take photos. The problem is categorizing it, right? So yeah. if you're, you're just the... I don't, I'm not your just, but you know, if you're just a resident, you do your own house and you have trouble finding that. But imagine if you're a property management company, um, some of our customers manage a hundred and hundred thousand units and above. Hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah. And, and above, right? And, and that's 100,000 units. Yeah. And, okay. and in the U S more than half, I think around more than half of the, the, the properties turn every single year. Right. So that's about 50,000 move and move outs a year wow. that you're having to manage. And it's just impossible. How do you manage on people's phones and emails? It, it, it doesn't work. Uh, you know, I've talked to people, um, other business leaders about this. And um, there's a theme of, you know, if you can find something that's kind of a boring business, it could also be a big business. Right. And, you know, no one's ever said, man, housing inspections, whoo, talking about, mm-hmm. I get excited about that. But you just yeah. talked about the prospect of, you know, with one client, 50,000 of those a year, that's a major pain point. How much time do you think this solves people? Oh, man. It, um, or saves them? So this is the interesting part. So on the actual inspection piece, I don't think it saves them a lot of time. In fact, they probably, probably, they spend more time on the inspection piece but they're super thorough, right? Like they're going and making sure mm-hmm. that hole that you left in the wall, they would have found that, right? Because someone's going through and checking it out again behind the, the stop, the traffic light, what's there. Um, yeah, note to all landlords, make sure you take the signs off the wall when you're doing your walkthrough. Yeah. <laughs> but, but what it does save, it saves on the back end. When, when, when someone is going through and saying, well, you know, in 2017, two years ago, what was the condition of the property? You go into our software, you type in the address, and you can say, oh, here's a history of where it is. So on the back end, it saves everyone lots of time. Then you'd have to court. You'd have to go to court and have to fight these silly legal battles. Um, uh, and then the ultimate thing is you can increase your rental deposits because right, if I showed you a before and after photo and you're the resident, you're like, well, I think I did punch a hole in the wall. <laughs> it wasn't there when you moved in. Um, I'm not saying you did that, but like that. So I think it really saves a lot of time on the, the back end, the front end. You're spending um, the same amount of time, if not more, trying to collect the information that you weren't collecting before. Yeah, yeah. But so no, this makes a lot of sense, though. And what's what's great about this is because you, you're focusing. It sounds like, and and I'll, I should ask this a different way before I assume who is yeah. your primary customer. So we have um, our primary customer is um, a property manager. Uh, property manager. Um, okay. Yeah. We, we today we focus in on the apartment industry, so multifamily apartment owners and operators. So, is that for uh, the sake of scale? Um, I think they have a much more well. I, scale definitely plays into that, but um, I, yeah, definitely scale. <laughs> I think about it because if you, know, <laughs> if you, you get one account that comes with a hundred units pretty quickly. Well, it's really the, 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 the size of the challenge that we're, that we're solving is much bigger at scale, right? Because um, if, if you manage five houses, like you could use paper, <laughs> it doesn't matter. But when you're doing like 100,000 units you, and you don't have the visibility, you just can't do it at scale anymore. So, um, yeah, so really, I think that you, you, yeah, you're probably right. The scale is a big factor. That yeah. Really well we- Okay, because I was wondering if maybe any like small time landlords or even people who just have like a smaller portfolio, if this would be a fit for them, or is it maybe is it overkill? Is it price prohibitive? It, so we actually uh, sell our software. Um, we used to when we first started, we did sell to a lot of um, uh, sort of single family small landlords, yeah. um, and I actually really love that market. I felt like because a lot of times you were selling to the owner of the company. You're talking, yeah, you tell the to the head honcho. 
Yeah, and it was really, I just found it really satisfying because they would tell me how great the software is and how much it's saved them. And that was really fun. Um, so we do, do still have a bunch of customers from that era. Um, but today, a lot of the smaller property managers, we actually sell them through our partnerships. So Buildium, I don't know if you know Buildium. Uh, yep. They're a property management software company. They actually resell our software for us. So we do see, see. a good number of um, uh, small property management companies. Ah, uh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So I want to talk about um, the, the, the happy insights. Yeah. So there's a lot of plays being made to visualize data, to, to know what to do. What do you guys actually visualize in your insights? And then, um, you know, what are, what are property management companies using that for? What are the outcomes that are expected? Um, okay, so maybe I'll, I'll step back again and really just, I just want to keep drilling that the, the ideal customer for us is managing a lot of units, right? Yep. So um, today, the software, we have um, 1.9 million units that use our software. Wow. Um, which, is, which is a pretty decent scale. Um, and then to and give you some years, um, this has been over seven years, but seven years. a lot of yeah, that growth has come in the last two to three years. Two to three, yeah, I was going to ask, it's probably the last few years because the market has finally caught up. Yes. You guys were very early in yeah. all regards. Oh, it was, it was painful. <laughs> so slow, like well, you company. talked about doing mock-ups on an iPad one. I assumed either you were really scraping for cash or you were early. It was really, yeah, we, the iPad one didn't even have the camera. <laughs> so I was selling the future. I was going, so you can plug your iPhone with these, this dongle at the bottom. Or so this changed the story that you were sell, you were pitching this on a Kindle, man. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> it was a Blackberry. And, no, it was, uh, I, it was painful. But um, yeah, we've been doing for seven, seven years now. The last two or three years has seen a lot of growth here in, in that unit count. Um, Photos cumulative. We've take, our customers have taken 131 million photos <laughs> in the system. It's a lot of photos. So, oh my goodness! Are you a preferred partner with Google to map inside of buildings? Um, no, not really. I, I I'm just we haven't about that. Yeah, we haven't thought about how to really use that. I mean, I've got some ideas on on doing that, but we haven't um, yeah. done anything intelligent yet. <laughs> One day. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what was just the, the question? The question was, um, yeah. So uh, the insights that I mean, you you have yeah. you know it says on the site, get real time intelligence on property conditions, portfolio yeah. trends, optimize operations, and so like, and especially in the bigger in the in, in the bigger apartment world right now, there's a lot of different types of plays on. We're going to help you visualize performance of your property. Yeah. And so I want to like cut through some of the marketing jargon and find out what are the real nuts and bolts you're delivering and what sort of outcomes would the yeah. ideal customer, you know, expect from using these visualizations. Cool. So uh, I'll give you some really uh, practical use cases, right? So let's say, for example, you manage 10,000 units um, and a lot of your portfolio is split kind of in the northwest region and the southwest region. And then uh, what you're trying to you're trying to find out something as simple as like how many countertops need replacing in the next sixty days across my north west west region? How would you know that? You just would not know that. You would have to call every single property, and and the maintenance guy you have to talk to the maintenance guy and say, hey, hey Bob, like how many are you doing? Oh, we're probably doing six, maybe ten. I don't know. And then you bring the next person. We're doing like twenty. The other ones that we only got two. And like, so you could, in, in, in our insights product, you can say, show me the number of countertops that need replacing in the next 30 days, for example. Mm. You could pull things like how many items were, were damaged um, across the last uh, 45 days and there was a flooding in, in say, Florida. You could kind of pull that up. Um, you could do something, as, oh, the risk compliance, you know, that safety compliance thing I was telling you about where the, the railings fell, fell out. Um, you could you could initiate a, a national campaign of all your ten thousand units and say, um, how many balcony railings have we checked in the last thirty days and made sure that they they're not falling apart. Today you couldn't do that without the insights product. You would have to guess, right? Or have a meticulously maintained Excel spreadsheet. But I don't know anyone who wants to do that. Who wants to do that? And then. The great thing is with the photo is you can actually see what's going on as well. So you can manage remotely. So um, a lot of the 
uh, quote unquote more experienced like maintenance or operations people at corporate level, so they can log into property uh, a property in San Francisco and see, oh, these are the last you know ten inspections, um, and and these are the things that have damage, and then you can see photos, so they can actually manage remotely. That makes a lot of sense, and then obviously you know, and we talked about this on another show recently, um, but a lot of people here making repairs. Um, as as an expense, but when it's preventative maintenance or re- ongoing maintenance, it's such a big deal. It actually really it saves money in the long run, yeah. and yeah. you know, yeah. like even even the apartment I just got in Chicago, I walked in and you know, I was also looking for things to point out because I wanted some negotiation ability. Sure. So I said yeah, to yeah. the I said to the property manager, I was like, so how long has the sink been leaking? She goes, what? I said, well, it's not leaking, but the faucet here is just dripping and I can see the iron stain yeah, on, yeah. The, on the porcelain. She goes, oh, I don't know why they didn't tell me about that. I can tell you yeah. why they didn't tell you. There's no incentive. Yeah. I was like, the tenant doesn't pay water. <laughs> that was my first indication. I was like, so who pays the water? And, uh, you know, but something like that. Now, that's not a big deal in just the sink, but imagine it was under the sink. Yeah, it, it, it's it's that multiplied. can be a monstrous problem because yeah. eventually it could saturate through the ceiling. It can start leaking in the unit below. It could flood the unit below. The sink could fall through the floor. You know, if it's stick built, I mean, there's a ton of problems. So this really is the type of solution that gives people ability to prevent, you know, those big catastrophic repairs or even someone falling off a railing on a tall building. Yeah. That's yeah. It's um. Yeah, it's very attractive. But um, yeah, I think all of this stems from the lack of, um, you know, the, the checklist thing that you mentioned, right? Because there's no checklist, you don't have to do anything. And you, you people, it's not that people are lazy. Sometimes you just forget it. Like you just don't remember. So um, I think we just, we have a system where it keeps everyone accountable and there's, everyone is, there's, everything is visible. And the insights is basically just there for you to pull out data and information. So um yeah, so we, I, I know there's a lot of products out there that have all these analytics and this and that. Ours is really specific to our the data in our in our software. So you get you get visualizations based on whatever you input on your inspections. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So so if you don't have any radiators throughout your building because you're not in, you're not in New York, you know, yeah. maybe you're in Miami, so there's no need for radiators. You're not going to have a radiator checklist item. But if you're in New York that's probably going to be something you're going to want to make sure that the radiator has been bled. Okay. It's good. Air's out of the system. And cause we've got 200 of these to do, you know, yeah. you can check that off the list. It's been done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and now, and if you think about the data set that we're collecting, it's a very unique data set. It doesn't actually exist in any property management system today. All right. Like it, it's, it's inspections on the countertop, the, what the condition is like that doesn't exist anywhere today. And so um, our, the analytics tool that we use, the insights product is really specific to our data. Is there any sort of like uh, anecdotal or like just, I want to say weird data sets you've pulled. Like we want to see how many people have Corian versus granite or how many people have a uh, two bedroom for each two bedroom versus or, or bath two bathroom for every two bedroom versus one bathroom for a two bedroom. Like, do you do yeah. any of that kind of analysis? We don't do a lot of that. Our customers use that. Like, I don't think we're intelligent enough to do that. So we actually just give it to our customers. Well, and, and, and we, so I think that the beauty of our of the insights product is um, our customers already uh, they already know what to look for, right? It's just they don't have the information to to figure out what they're trying to ask. So um, we we don't, but. Uh, we are trying to work with some smarter people in the industry to figure out what can we infer from the, from the information. Um, yeah. I don't think that I don't think that the the industry is ready for that quite yet. Um, I, I think it, it, it's you know, it's traditionally been such a hands on industry, and I think that won't change for at least another five to ten years. Um, so I think what we want to do is just equip the the property manager, the maintenance guy, our customers with more information so that they can make better decisions. Um, over time, there could be some, like, I don't know, machine learning or whatever, more so the algorithms that can support the arguments, but I don't think we want to make it for them. I, I hate it when technology takes over my decision-making. <laughs> yeah, so I'm guessing you don't have a Tesla. 
Uh, I really want one. I can't afford one. <laughs> <laughs> you going to let it drive for you? Uh, I, I would. I, I've been in Teslas and I love Teslas. <laughs> I didn't know. So I didn't know like Tesla. Did you know? Okay. So Teslas, when they're in autopilot mode, they, they don't know how to stop at traffic lights if there's no cars in front of you. Did you know that? <laughs> I had no idea. I was, we, were, we were heading to Napa Valley in this Tesla and autopilot, you know, it was really good. I was like, oh, this is really cool. And then um, the lights went, were red in front. I'm like, hey, this car's gone really quickly. Hopefully it slams on the brakes. And it didn't. And I was like, oh, the crap. <laughs> we're like, I don't know, 50 yards from the, the, the traffic light. And it didn't stop. And I went, slam on the brakes. And I'm like, that was really strange. Wow. Um, then I... Then I asked, I think we did a Google search on YouTube, or whatever it was, and it says, yeah, it only stops if there's a car in front of you. So it doesn't stop at traffic lights. So I'm like, oh, my, it would be great to know that. It, it, it would be good thing. to know that. Yeah, that, yeah. that should be like, uh, one, one. like one of their marketing <laughs> things or something. I don't know. Maybe for uh, some safety. <laughs> hey, let's, like let's try to um, uh, get Elon Musk to respond to this podcast episode. How about that? That'd be great. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so uh, you, you, you've been in business for a few years now, obviously, you know, so um, you said you about seven years now. Um, and over time, like the last few years is really where you've seen the majority of your growth. And I'm sure some of that has to do with timing. The market has finally caught up. You know, yeah. workforces are obviously changing over as far as, as far as who's taking over and running places. And as we see more millennials move into management, middle management, leadership positions, yeah. there's a little bit more of a digital first attitude being brought with that. Mm -hmm. um, but what would you also attribute your growth towards? What would you say is driving it? Um, I think like focus is a, is a key thing that uh, for at least from what we can control is really Internally, it's the focus, right? So initially, when we first started, um, what I haven't told you is when we first started, we actually had customers using us for any type of inspection. So we had a guy in the country, Georgia, not the state, uh, and he was um, using it on H inspecting ATM machines, the, the, the ATMs um, for banks. Um, we, have a, we have cruise ships that use us for inspections. We have a bunch of hotels. We have gyms, fitness centers. We have all these different things. And so what we, what we did was, um, you know, 2016, as we got out that first big enterprise customer, we realized, well, I was like, well, this is really hard. I can't sell to all these different customers and we're trying to sell to property management companies and like even single family versus multifamily. That's a, that's a very different. There's piece. some big differences. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're subtle, but they're very important. So we just said, um, let's focus in on what we, we're really good at and what I really want to do. And, and like real estate, residential, real, rental, residential real estate was what I really enjoyed working with. I love real estate. I love technology. So we sort of stopped selling to everyone else and then we just focus in on real estate. So focus was the key thing. Mm. Yeah. That's uh, that should, that should come as a, not as a surprise to a lot of people, but I mean, I think it's so important to reiterate that so many times because it is, it's easy to drown in opportunity. Yeah. And everyone wants to pay you five bucks and say, yeah, I want that. And you realize, you know, like sometimes the $5, it, like there's, there's money up front, but the yeah. cost, opportunity cost, plus the cost to maintain and service something like, you yeah. just couldn't make it. So, um, but I think, yeah, having focus allows you to, to um, maybe speak to speci a specific audience and person better. Yeah. Um, and that's what we learned through that process. Yeah, totally. So, uh, are you seeing any some, like any particular markets adopting this more than others? Like, say, some cities are ahead of other cities, or you seen all over no, no regard for geolocation? Um, I mean, our, our focus is really on North America, so U.S., uh, Canada, um, and no, we have customers. Uh, I mean, if you yeah, our customers that manage, you know, who, who's who's not the one I can think of. Um, uh, so we have a few customers that manage 140,000 student housing beds, um, and that's across the U.S. Um, we have uh, Airbnb is one of our customers, and they're probably the only ones that are very geographically dispersed. So they use us in about 400 cities or something like that at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we we don't we don't go outside of North America is our main focus. We don't really care where. Yeah. Where it is. Yeah. 
Yeah. I was just wondering, I, I, I keep feeling like, man, we, I want to see like one city, like fully break away from all the other cities and like prove, yeah. but I, yeah. the common theme I get is everyone's kind of just going at the same pace as they yeah. catch up. The technology is there and waiting. Yeah. I mean, you, you do get like a little, like some pockets, but the, the challenge with, with, um, with this adoption isn't so like, like San Francisco, New York, I kind of, maybe Chicago, I kind of where you think some, like by just by way of people being more progressive, I think there's a bit more activity there, but the problem with real estate, it's, it's, it's so fractional. Every, so many people own real estate. And so I right, trying to convince, um, everyone <laughs> it's just hard there are some companies that are doing great stuff um i think mind myND i don't know if you've heard of those guys yep yep uh, i think they're they're doing something pretty innovative and i like what they're doing um uh but really it comes down to the ownership of real estate i think that's where the challenge is you ever heard of avail i think avail are doing great stuff there are um yeah uh, ryan is doing amazing things and i think um you, you have people that are definitely pushing all right, yeah. for, for the adoption. But at the end of the day, it's the ownership of the of the real estate that that's that's the challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Um, so I want to shift gears a little bit. Uh, you kind of talked about this a little bit earlier when you said you know part of your growth has come from focus. Yeah. Um, but can you share anything else, uh, or maybe a different story of a time where you either had to make a pivot or a significant change because the direction you're going wasn't working? Yeah, so it it really was that transition from selling to the like the uh, single family property management companies to the multifamily apartment owners. Um, it was a really painful one because we we spent many years building relationships at um, mm-hmm. you know uh, conventions like NARPM, you know the National Association of Residential Property Managers, and we I actually probably knew every single one of our customers the first at least the first. Two, three hundred of them. I actually met the owners. I know every single one, and that was a really wow. painful switch to, to, you know, to like it was a it was a hard switch to go from that and say, hey, we're not actually focusing on this market anymore. I didn't go to any of those those conferences anymore, and um, it was painful. And then even telling our investors, right, I had to go to our investors and say, hey, um, the revenue that we're experiencing, we're going to experience a drop in revenue, right? Not even I'm sure staying. that went over well. Um, we, we fortunately have very um, good investors. Like uh, they, they did after the first couple of months and they're like, Hey, are you sure this is the right thing? I'm like, trust me <laughs> it is. Um, but we, we started to see, you know, after like a quarter, we started to see that dip kind of go back up and actually like shoot up. Um, and so that was really fun, but that process was painful. Right. Mm-hmm. You, you, it's like exercising. You know you should do it, but <laughs> no one wants to do it. Um, but once you start, it's like, oh my God, I'm going to eat healthier and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, I don't know if that make, made sense or not. <laughs> no, it's all good. I, and I totally understand. And, and you know, that that's a that's a tough transition to make, especially after you build all those relationships and, yeah. you know, you, you convince yourself that you had to go to all of those conferences, but they were, yeah. they're also, they turn to be fun. You know, you build a community in that, you know, you have to say goodbye to that. But yeah. do you still have any of those original 19 customers? Um, we do. We have, I think, maybe about nine of them are still with us from 2000. That's amazing. It, it's, it's crazy. And um, this is how funny it was because when I first signed them up, I signed them up on like a $49 a month unlimited plan. Right? Okay. And, uh, and that probably, well, it was good at the time. But um, the other day, someone came through and said, what the hell is this unlimited plan? Like who who has unlimited inspection <laughs> or new, new And I was like, oh, that's me. <laughs> um, but it was just funny. How, like, yeah, the, the, the company has matured quite a bit, but there's still people that we still find. Oh, that's that one customer that you know. One there was a customer gave iPads to, and they still have this weird iPad, free iPad, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they're running they're running the original app native on an iPad 2 have not upgraded <laughs> no, yeah, uh, yeah we, we still have a, a bunch of those original customers um, and it's really encouraging because it's um, yeah it's just great for them you know, it's just great for me to see how they've, they've grown and how we've grown and I mean, the industry is definitely maturing I can tell yeah. you that. yeah 
Well, let's shift gears here. I want to move into the bottom of the show. Um, and uh, this is one of my favorite sections of the show. It's called For the Future. I'll, I'll give you a preview here. For the Future is a segment where I ask each guest who comes to the show to give their best predictions based on the following four questions. Jindo, are you ready to play? Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Question number one, what does Happy Co. look like one year from now? I, I think we will continue doing what we're doing. Uh, we're, we're launching a bunch of new products as well. Um, so I, a year from now, I would love to see our customers starting to adopt our new products, solving more challenges that they've told us about, um, and just continuing to grow in the space. Yeah, very cool. Question number two, and you feel free to in, in, interpret this with your own <laughs> lens. Uh-oh. What does the housing market look like one year from now? Um, I, I don't think a lot will change. I think the market will soften a little bit. I mean, I think we're already starting to see on a, on a buy-sell side, it will start to soften. Um, I think rents will start to slow down just a little bit slightly. Um, I don't think everything else will change that much. Like if, if you know real estate and prop tech, it's just going to keep <laughs> doing what it's doing. It's going to take a while. We're not building any more land. That's not true, actually. That's not true. Some people are dredging up the bottom of oceans and and rivers and lakes and building land. You have have Phoenix, Arizona, you have Vegas, you have New Mexico. There's a lot of land to build into. Yeah, you have Death Valley. (laughs) Kansas. Yep. North Dakota. Yep. You know how much of North Dakota is vacant? A lot of it, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> have you um, ever been to North Dakota? No, I have not. Is it let good? Me, it's let really me tell cold. you, North Dakota is, in my opinion, one of my favorite states I've ever driven through. I just really? love looking at the old abandoned houses in the middle of nowhere and having to ask myself, who in their right mind 50 years ago or more yeah. thought this was a good spot to put a house? Because it's, it's not cold. now. Yeah. Anyway. Well, uh, isn't there some prop tech companies that are in North Dakota? I think. Are there? Mm, it's probably Mel there. I don't know. Maybe they're there. We should find yeah. one. Find one that's in North Dakota. Let's get North Dakota represented up on the show. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll ask him. Um, but he's got a good thing going, so I'll, I'll try to look for him. All right. Let's make it happen. All right. Question number three here. What's one industry trend you think will continue but you wish would go away? Um... I think the the large um, you know large players in the market will continue to tell um, people that they're building best software, <laughs> um, but I I do think like I hope that will there's a lot of so maybe this I'll, I'll rephrase it there's a lot of great companies that are starting today with amazing software technology and they, and they want to get it in the hands of um, the customers the problem with the customers is they're being told by the existing big players to, oh, don't buy that software because we, you know, we're going to build it or we're going to solve that problem in a much uh, less way. And I think that, I hope that will go away soon. And, and empty promises. Much- it's, it's just, it's hard to do everything, <laughs> do everything well. Um, yeah. I hope that will go away because at the end of the day, we're trying to improve like, you know, people's lives and, and that's not the, the right way to do it. So that's what I have to go away. I appreciate but, that perspective. Won't, won't go away. Yeah. All right, question number four. What's one thing you believe will dramatically change or fade away in real estate as a result of technological advances? Um, so I think what's going to be really scary is the people that uh, will adopt and embrace technology. And I use this, in not just operations, like on the whole, um, people who do that will, will win. And I feel worried and fearful for the ones that don't embrace it as well. And they go, no, this is the way we've done it for the last 50 years. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But, you know, like even buying a house today, like you can use technology to, to get your, to buy it at a much better price or manage it, like avail, right? You can manage it in a much more efficient way than, than spreadsheets or whatever. Um, and I just feel like technology is inevitable. And, and if you don't adopt it and don't embrace it, um, then I'm, I'm very fearful for those. Companies. I'm right there with you, by the way. 
I, I, I agree. And I thought about it from that perspective. It sometimes I'm like, well, that's what you get. And other times I'm like, well, I do feel bad at someone's job. Yeah. Uh, but you're going to get left behind. You know? Yeah. It's the truth. It's not, it's not even just property management. It's not just the management of it. It's actually the ownership. Right, like some someone is going to own a lot of real estate because that that person or, or that entity knows something that someone else doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will change. Well, we're gonna move into what I like to call the last three, okay. and Jindo, these are questions more about you. Whew, all right. So, yeah, take take a deep breath. These are tough ones. The Tinder date. All right. So. <laughs> Uh, first one here is what are you reading? Oh, um, what was I reading yesterday? I, uh, so I do a lot of audio books. Um, yep. Uh, I, I think most of us still call that reading for some reason. Oh, that's reading the ears. Um, yeah. And like I, I, uh, was listening last night. It was, um, uh, uh, principles by Ray Dalio. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's come up a few times. Yeah, it, it's a, it's a, I, I love it. I, I, there's a lot of hype around it. You feel that book is worth the hype? Um, philosophically, I, I, I like it. I, I think that's, you know, that's this kind of workplace and environment I would love to build where everything is transparent and like 100% candor. You're not second guessing, oh, what's the agenda? I think that would be great. Then we can all just do our best work if we don't guess what the other person's thinking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Question number two, who are you learning from? I learn from everyone, man. Like I, I, you know, people go, oh, who's the CEO that you like? I'm like, I learn from everyone and anyone because um, the way I always say is, you know, I want to live a thousand years. And the only way I can do that is by just asking people about their lives. And, you know, someone that's 60, 70 years old knows a lot more than what I do. <laughs> so everyone. Yeah. All right. And the last one here, what inspires you? Um, I just think like solving the problem and it's just really fun. And, uh, I think what really inspires me is just success. And I, and I say that in a, you know, in a very, it can be in a very small way. Every time, like, you know, we, we sign up a new customer, they use it, it tells how great it is. I'm like, Oh wow, I'm solving someone's problem. I want to do it. So that's very exciting. I think if, yeah, just, just being able to grow and, and learn and grow and, and, and improve. Um, one of our core values at Happy Co is Kaizen, which is continuous improvement. Um, and that's what? really Kaizen, which is continuous improvement. Kaizen, okay. Yeah, so that's, um, that was a Toyota phrase, but um, uh, we really believe that. I really embrace it at the company and you know, just growing every day and getting, being a better version of yourself. That's, that's what's down to right like it's love it one percent better every day right exactly or ten percent if you're in the 10x club <laughs> now then you'll be like four thousand percent no no i think one percent uh one percent is good the small it's the small things i think done over a long period of time that, that yeah really help. yeah that is uh that's totally the truth uh, i've always taken that um that approach as well because i'm a bit of a slow learner but if <laughs> i learn seven days a week Everyone else is yeah. only learning five days a week. Yeah. No, so, yeah. you know, Did take you? that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jindu, I, I had a, a ton of fun. I, I really appreciate your time and uh, sharing about Happy Co and what you're working on. I think it, it's a really interesting business. Um, you found a hole where no one else was paying attention to it. And clearly you're solving problems because um, you obviously you guys are seeing the growth and um, you'll, I think you'll probably continue to see that. Uh, before we head out, though, I want to make sure people have an opportunity. If they want to get connected to you or learn more about Happy Co., where do they go and how can they do that? Yeah, so they, uh, they can go onto our website, so uh, happy.co, so H-A-P-P-Y dot C-O. Um, they can email me. It's J-I-N-D-O-U at happy.co. Um, I usually respond to most emails. Uh, so yeah, like they can do that or I'm on um, other pieces of social media. Uh, I'm not on Tinder anymore, but it's all good. <laughs> that would be a first. If there's a way, like, I don't know how Tinder works, um, but uh, 
if there was a way that you could give out your Tinder user and name and that happened, that would have been two first times ever in one oh, yeah. episode. Yeah, go on Tinder.com slash Jindo. <laughs> <That'll be laughs> <awesome. laughs> yeah. But hey, Jindo, I really appreciate your time. Um, let's keep in touch and uh, yeah, have a good uh, rest of your day. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. See you. Well, that's it for today. Thanks so much for listening to the Tech Nest podcast. Hey, don't forget, you can get on the email list so you never miss an upcoming episode. That's technest.io. That's T-E-C-H-N-E-S-T dot I-O. Get on the email list. Uh, go to the App Store, whether you found us on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, wherever you found us. Leave us a five-star review and share it with your friends. And if you've got a guest or someone that you'd like to recommend, or if you think that you'd be a great guest on the show, hey, send me an email, nate at realteampanda.com. That's nate at realteampanda.com. See you guys later.